für die erste Starterin heute Abend beim Sustainability Science Slam für euch aus Lüneburg, Julia Leviton. Okay, we've started. Right, I would like to talk to you today about multiple projects that I've been working on over the last 12 years and how they relate to thinking about sustainable food systems, in particular how we think about biodiversity in agricultural landscapes. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about why cooperation is problematic when we think about sustainable food systems. So we've been thinking a lot uh, here at Loifana about how we can change systems towards more sustainable states. So we can say that the current food system is not very sustainable and we need to intervene in this food system to make it more sustainable. And we've been drawing on frameworks like this framework from Donella Meadows um, to think about how we can intervene in that system to change it. And she's depicted it as a, sy a system of a lever and you can intervene in that system at a shallow point and move it a small distance or you can intervene in that system at a deep leverage point and move it further. Um, and I'd like to thank Dave for doing the graphics on that slide. <laughs> So we've really been looking at what are the deep intervention points that we can use to move the system towards sustainability. Um, you can also think about this system of leverage points. It's often been depicted as an iceberg, where these deeper leverage points are the ones right at the bottom of the iceberg. They're the ones more hidden under the system. And I like this way of thinking about things, also because of the way that it's put, okay, this deeper leverage point of intent is about our mental models, how we think about that system, the values and the intentions and the beliefs that are incorporated into the system that we are operating within, within that food system. Um, and we usually think about the values that are in a system and we think about the endpoint values. So how do people want this system to look like? What do we want our landscapes to look like in the end? What do we want the food to look like? What do we want the biodiversity to look like? We often talk about endpoints. And there's been a lot of work done here um, around thinking about, okay, what are the endpoint scenarios? What do we want those landscapes to look like? Um, this particular one is from Romania. But we've also looked at, say, governance scenarios. Uh, how can we uh, manage these landscapes better in order to better balance, say, food production and biodiversity? Um, and when we take these scenarios back to people, and we talk to them about these scenarios, there's a high level of agreement that yes, this is what we want the landscape to look like. We don't want an intensified agricultural landscape. We don't want to lose our biodiversity. It's important to us, this cultural, biodiverse landscape. We want to keep it. So we have a high level of agreement about those endpoint values, which is great news, right? We, we all want the same thing. We're heading in similar directions. And the need for cooperation amongst people and organizations is often implicit in these endpoints that we can come up with. So in these kinds of scenarios, we're often saying people need to work together. This can be lots of different organizations working together to uh, perhaps bring together resources and skills and capacity. So compensating for what each other lacks, putting it all together and creating something big, a, bit, a better project together to meet these end goals. Or we can talk about, in the example on your right, we can talk about farmers working together within a landscape to collaborate on how they manage their land to produce better biodiversity outcomes. So that's implicit in there. And yet, what I have found repeatedly is that that cooperation that is built into these endpoints is resisted. People do not want to collaborate. I've put up 
three quotes there. These are representative quotes from different projects that I have done over the last 12 years that really demonstrate how people are resisting working together. So independence is important. This was people telling me that, no, we really don't want to work with our neighbour because it's really important to maintain our independence. Or that bringing the farmers themselves together is a problem for collaborating to produce biodiversity outcomes. Or that we just don't have enough civic spirit to work together. So we share an endpoint, but we don't share values on how we need to achieve that endpoint. And I argue, okay, so it's not enough to share our beliefs and values of what we want our food system to look like. We need to share beliefs and values of how we are getting there. And this figure comes from a very specific framework from political science called the Advocacy Coalition Framework. And I like it because it gives us a framework for thinking about three different types of values and beliefs. It has our deep core beliefs, the things that we hold deep within us, such as our endpoint goals, that we want biodiversity, we want sustainable agriculture and sustainable food. The next level up is our policy core beliefs. How do we want to get there? What are we willing to do? Are we willing to work with each other? And then the, the top level is the secondary aspects. What resources are we willing to put into it? Uh, yeah, what does the collaboration look like? And I think it's important so far in research, we've focused a lot on these deep core beliefs, finding these scenarios of what we want the landscape to look like is these deep core beliefs. And we share those quite often around sustainability, but we're not sharing these policy core beliefs. We're not sharing the idea that we need to work together and how we achieve that. And so I think we need to zoom in and unpack these policy values a bit more. And I'm going to end with a little story to tell you, I'm hoping you recognize the, the sound, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to end with a story to argue that we need to understand what shapes our policy values. If we really want to be able to intervene at deep leverage points and move this food system towards sustainability, then we need to be understanding how have we ended up here that we have these policy values that we don't want to work with each other? And so as I read this story, have a bit of a, read, tell this story, <laughs> have a bit of a think about how are these policy values shaped? Why might the people in my story not want to collaborate in order to bring about the sustainable food system? So settle down, relax. And once upon a time, in the countryside, there lived a couple. They ran a farm, and this farm was productive, and they produced potatoes, and they had big fields, and they were happy. And then came a change of government. And that government said that they cannot own this land anymore. It is bad to own land. Their farm is being confiscated from them. That farm is then collectivized. They're no longer allowed to work on their land. They're put in prison because they are landowners. And it is not okay to own land anymore. When they are released from prison, they are sent back to work on the farm that they used to own, but for someone else to profit from that. It's not their farm anymore. They work for the rest of their lives. It is hard, and towards the end of their life, as they're getting older, they're allowed to buy a small holding. Fairly nearby, they own a small patch of land, and they can now work again just for themselves to produce their own food and meet their own needs. Then there's another change of government. Then, 10, 15 years later, they join the European Union. They are happy to be part of this new political system because this was the freedom that they were promised. And under the European Union, they're given subsidies and their neighbors are given subsidies and they're given subsidies for their individual actions on their individual land. And those subsidies help them to produce their food and to produce biodiversity benefits. Zoom, 
maybe 10, 15 years further on, and along come me. I'm then introduced to the story, and I start saying to them, hey, wouldn't it be great if you worked with your neighbor just up the valley? And we found a way that you collaborated and found a way to share what you're doing on your land and found a way to plan together the biodiversity actions that you're doing on your land. Because that's what <laughs> essentially I am doing with these endpoint scenarios and the, the suggestions I have for management. And so with that, I will end my story, but ask you to please think what in that story has shaped people's attitudes to whether or not they're willing to cooperate. And therefore, when we talk about intervening in systems, why is it complicated? Why do we have to think about difficult so social, cultural, and historical situations? And where are the leverage points in changing that system? Thank you.